Hey guys, welcome back to another market and forecast. I'm not even going to ask you how you guys are because I'm in the same boat. I know the market is tough. I know you all are struggling. I am struggling. I know it's hard out there. February in general is not the best month, even in the best of times. And when the market is the way it is right now, of course, February has been pretty testy, hasn't it? Now, I know that some of you disagree with my hopefulness for the future or my positivity or positive outlook, but I'm going to say this again. This is not going to last forever. It will get better. There is no business out there that doesn't go through its own highs and lows. Well, I guess unless you are a divorce attorney or a mortician. Now, if you're new to my channel, a warm welcome to you. I teach about the trucking industry with a heavy focus on the spot market and freight market analysis. So if this is a topic that piques your interest, feel free to subscribe down below. So what does this week have in store for us? Ready? Let's go. So today's video, we will start with tender rejections. And before we go to the board, I want to address a question that I have been getting over and over again. What in the world are tender rejections? Well, the trucking market is divided into two main parts. There is the contract market, and then there's the spot market or the load board. When shippers have contract carriers to move their freight, that contract is also referred to as a paper rate because that contract is non-binding, meaning that contract carriers can at any time say, no, I'm not going to move this contract load. So when a carrier does that, it's called a tender rejection, that load ends up trickling down to the spot market, to the load board. And there is a heavy correlation. The more contract carriers reject their contract freight, the higher the spot market rates on the load board. So let's take a look at what is happening this week. And we'll start with the tender rejections for the three equipment types. Now, again, as a reminder, these charts that I show you by Sonar, I will attach them down below where you can look at them in more detail because I know it's hard to see. So the first thing I wanna show you, reefer is in blue, flatbed is in orange, and dry van is in green right here. So this is as of the 11th. So what can we see? Well, we can see that there's some good news for flatbeds. The tender rejection rates increased quite a bit in the past few days, which is awesome. Same thing for reefers. It's not as big of an increase, but there is a little bit of an increase in tender rejection rates, which means that for both flatbeds and reefers, we can expect the spot rates to start going up a little bit. Now for dry vans, it's business as usual. The tender rejection index is kind of going down very slowly, plateauing, not much there. Now, if we look at the five year historical data, again, as a reminder, reefers in blue, flatbeds in orange and dry vans in green, we can see that both reefers and dry vans are at the lowest level in five years, except for maybe April of 2020 when the shutdowns happened, right? So if you look at this closer, you can see that we're pretty low in terms of tender rejection rates. Now, flatbeds are doing more or less okay historically speaking of course the tender rejections did plummet quite a bit in the end of 2022 they did rise a little bit over the past few days which is awesome but nevertheless historically speaking flatbeds are doing more or less okay in the big picture of things compared to the other two equipment types now this is not to say that flatbed operators are not struggling right now there is not much to choose from the lanes are all messed up but nevertheless, compared to the other two equipment types, flatbeds are still in the lead. Now, if we look at the big picture, all equipment types, just general volume in the United States versus rejection rates, the volume is in blue, the rejection rates are in green. What we can see is that volumes currently, they are slipping a little bit, no denying it, but the tender rejection rates in general are going up, which is a welcome sign. Now I get a ton of questions about why I don't include as much flatbed data or any at all in these weekly market update videos. And I promise it's not on purpose. The issue is that Sonar doesn't really offer granular data on flatbeds. So I am forced to draw conclusions from the data that is available. And the most granular data I found for flatbeds is lane rates. Now I have the map right 
right here because we're going to be going through these lane rates for flatbeds to try to determine where is the best area for flatbeds. So we're going to go by market region. So what I did was I looked at all of the regions. So number one, we have the West Coast or the West, which includes states like California, Oregon, Washington, Utah, Idaho, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Nevada. Okay, so this is the West. And what I did was I took all of the lane information available for flatbeds and I just calculated the rate per mile, including the average rate per mile. So one of the things I want to remind you guys of is the colors here. So the green means there was an increase in rates from last week for a particular lane. The red means there was a decrease and the gray means there was no change. And these are lanes coming out of the West, right? We can see the rate per mile here, 344, 167 from Los Angeles to Dallas. Basically, the average rate per mile from the West is $2.72 average. Now, one of the things I want to draw your attention to is that average. While it's $2.72, what we have to realize is there are a lot of short loads here, like Los Angeles to Las Vegas, there is Denver to Salt Lake City, um, let's see, Los Angeles to Phoenix, Los Angeles to Salt Lake City, to Stockton, uh, Salt Lake City to Los Angeles, a ton of short loads here, and most of them are going back to the West. The only one here that is getting out of the West is to Dallas, and it's $1.67 per mile. So then we have the Southwest, which includes states like Arizona, Oklahoma, Texas, right? So the average here is $2.68 per mile, so a little bit lower than the West. You can see from Phoenix to Los Angeles, it's $1.31. From Dallas, you can see it's all green here from Dallas, from here all the way to here. And it's all improving, which means the Dallas market is coming alive a little bit, which is awesome. Then we have the Midwest right here. I know it's hard to see, but this is the highest average out of all of the regions, right? The average here is $3.27 per mile, which is great. And one thing I noticed here, and you will see it once you download this document down below, is a lot of these loads are one day loads, which means you are making a good amount of money and they pretty much all pay over a thousand dollars per day. And a lot of them are going from Midwest to Midwest. So if I had a flatbed, I would stay in the Midwest region and I would be running those one day loads from Midwest to Midwest. And then we have the Southeast, which includes states like Georgia, we have North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia. These are all the Southeast states. Now, one of the things I want to show you, first of all, the average is not bad, $2.99 per mile. But the thing I realized is that the Atlanta market, which is this portion, you can see either there was a negative change from last week or there was no change. Basically, the Atlanta market, is it seems to be slipping. So it's not a bad market because there are loads going to the Midwest here as well. Like, for example, from uh, Louisville to Chicago, $3.29 to Milwaukee, $3.24, Atlanta to Louisville, $2.76 not a bad market per se. And then we have our Northeast region, which includes states like Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, Maine, Connecticut, Vermont. What am I missing? Basically a ton of states there. Um, not a bad market because the average is $3.04 here. The only issue I see is that a lot of these lanes are going, the higher paying lanes are going from the Northeast to the Northeast. Although there are some going to the Midwest, like Baltimore to Indianapolis, which is $2.40, to Louisville, $2.60. We have to Ohio, $2.69. So not a horrible market to be in if you have a flatbed. So if we go back to this map right now, we see that the worst average rate per mile is from the Southwest. The West is on second place, although in the West, it's loads that are going from the West to the West, and there's not really much to choose from. The Midwest is the best, $3.27. And if you stay within the Midwest, I think that's where your opportunity would lie. The Northeast is not bad, but again, there are not many loads going to the Midwest. And then we have the Southeast, which is, it's okay. I suppose it's not horrible, but if it was me, if I had a flatbed still, 
I would stay within the Midwest. Okay, now let's take a look at state volumes and we're going to start with reefers. Which states have the highest load volume, right? So number one for the reefer is actually South Carolina, which increased by 88% from last week. Then we have North Dakota, Kentucky, Virginia, and so on and so forth. The thing is volumes don't tell us what the rates will be like, and they actually don't really tell us what the load board will look like because it all depends on tender rejection rates. The volumes here are contract volumes. So it really depends on how many of these contract loads are getting rejected and ending up on our load board. So let's take a look. For example, for South Carolina, for the reefer, we can see, I don't know what happened in South Carolina, but not only did the volume increase right here, as you can see the blue, it kind of skyrocketed. So did the tender rejection rates right here for the reefer from South Carolina. Now this is for the state of South Carolina. It's not any particular market area. Now, if we look at North Dakota, for example, we can see that the volumes, they actually kind of increased and then plateaued, right? and the tender rejection rates, they're at a negative 3.28%. So yeah, while North Dakota has the highest, the second highest volume, right, in terms of contract volume, we can see that the tender rejections are non-existent in the state as a whole. So there's not going to be much to choose from because these contract carriers are scooping up pretty much all of that freight. Now let's take a look at the van volumes. Now, obviously the van volumes are much, much higher than reefer volumes. But the thing is, if you look at this chart, you can see that pretty much nothing changed. Some things kind of went down a little bit. There are a couple that went up in terms of volume, but it's pretty much the same. So the best states in terms of contract volume are Texas, California, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Illinois, Ohio, and so on and so forth. But again, we have to understand what the tender rejection index looks like in these states to understand whether that volume will translate to our load board. So if we look at, for example, Texas, for the dry van, we can see that the volume went up and is now decreasing. Whereas, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I have to laugh at this. Tender rejection rates just kind of, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. They didn't just, I, I guess they jumped off a cliff. You know what? I think this is what is happening to tender rejection rates at this point in Texas for dry vans. Now, if we look at a state like California for dry vans, I know it is the second highest volume state in terms of contract freight, but there's not gonna be, there are going to be loads obviously to choose from, but not much. It's just going to be a mess. It's not going to be good rates for dry vans because the green tender rejection rates are down. The volume is down. Although I do have to give some credit here, it is starting to go up just ever so slightly. Unfortunately, there is no state specific volume data for flatbeds. It's only on a general national level, but I hope they add it soon. So let's cut to the chase. Where the heck do you have to be in order to actually grab some opportunities? So for that, we're going to look at the tender rejection index or tender reject index. This is for the dry van and holy moly, I have no idea what happened since last week, but Augusta, Maine increased by 10,951% from last week. Anyone know what happened? I have no idea. I actually looked at the chart and it's crazy. Look at that. So we have the volume this time in green, the volume skyrocketed. And so look at these tender rejection rates. I mean, they were flat, 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 and then something happened. They just went up, although they are plateauing kind of. Anyone know what is happening in Augusta, Maine? Basically, this shows me the volume is not going to be fantastic there. It's only at 20.52, but the rates are going to be much better than they were in the last few weeks. The second place for dry vans with the highest tender rejection rates is Cave Girardeau. And number three is Omaha, Nebraska. All three places actually had the tender rejection rates increase from last week. So we looked at Augusta, Maine. Let's take a look at Cave Girardeau and Omaha, Nebraska. So for Cape Girardeau, it's really, really nice to see in green that the volumes are going up. They're, they're starting to kind of level off, but they are going up, which is great. And the tender rejections are going up as well, although over the past two days they have been kind of plateauing and slowly starting to slip. 
but not a bad market area. Then we have Omaha, Nebraska. So Omaha, Nebraska, the volume is just not there. As you can see, the volume is at 55.5. There is just not enough volume. The tender rejections are good, although they did drop and then now they're kind of plateauing but the volume is just not there. It looked like it was recovering, but then it dropped. Maybe it's recovering a little bit right now, but my bet is that in Omaha, Nebraska, there is not going to be a ton to choose from, although the rates will be semi-decent. Now for the reefer, where are the tender rejections the highest? Number one, Bismarck, North Dakota. It dropped by 7.1% from last week. Number two is Fargo, North Dakota. And number three, a market area we have never encountered yet is Columbia, South Carolina, which is interesting. So unfortunately, and I don't know why, Sonar does not have volume data for Bismarck, North Dakota. So we're going to be looking at Fargo, North Dakota and Columbia, South Carolina. The blue is the tender rejection rates. They are pretty good, 36.57, not a bad tender rejection rate. But unfortunately, the volume here leaves much to be desired, although it has been climbing slowly since February. So maybe not a horrible market. My guess is the rates will be really good from there, but not much to choose from at the moment. Now, South Carolina, not sure what happened in South Carolina. The volume is there's pretty limited volume. Now, I know I said that South Carolina also had the highest volume, but that's statewide. This is for this particular market, but I don't know what happened that tender rejection rates just skyrocketed there. If anyone knows, let me know. I have no idea what happened there. So my guess is from this market area, Columbia, South Carolina, for a reefer, there's not gonna be much to choose from on the load board, not because the tender rejections are high, but because there's just not enough volume there. However, whatever there is, is going to pay higher than it did before, which is awesome. Now, something we haven't looked at in the recent videos I made is capacity scores. What is a capacity score? Well, the closer the value is to 100, the more negotiation power you have as a carrier in that particular market, because there are way more loads than there are trucks. So we can see that for a reefer, Chicago, Illinois is at 100. This is where you're going to have a ton of negotiating power as a carrier. Then we have Twin Falls, Idaho. Idaho has been a really, really good place for reefers, it seems. I don't know because none of my guys have been in Idaho in the recent past. Then we have Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, great market if you book your loads early on. Those loads go away really, really quickly. Wisconsin, California, Texas, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the worst places for a carrier in terms of negotiating power, and this surprised me, is number one at a value of three, St. Louis, Missouri. Then we have Fort Wayne, Indiana. I don't know what it is. I don't know why there are more trucks in that area than there are loads. Probably everyone's trying to get that opportunity, right? Because the Midwest is usually a really, really good place to be. Then we have Seattle, Houston, Richmond, Miami, Winchester, Columbus, and so on. For the dry van, at a value of 100, which means a really, really good place to be, Quincy, Illinois, and Cape Girardeau, Missouri. This is where you'll have your negotiating power. We also have Tennessee, Ohio, Michigan, so on and so forth. Worst places to be if you have a dry van is, of course, no, actually, I'm sorry. San Antonio is at a value of one, which is horrible. So San Antonio, you will not have a ton of negotiating power. Maybe there is just no volume there at all. Then we have California, right? These two are California, New Mexico, Brooklyn, New York, Florida, and so on and so forth. Okay, now the 3D map, and we're going to start with the dry van. So obviously, again, as a reminder, the higher the place, the more volume from that area, the darker blue an area, the more tender rejections means higher rates. So the West Coast is definitely not a place to be if you have a dry van. There is volume from Southern California, but there are no tender rejections. Although Utah seems to be coming alive, there is more volume there and it's becoming a little bit bluer, which is interesting. Now, the best markets, in my opinion, for a dry van are Memphis, Tennessee right here and Grand Rapids, Michigan right here. Why? 
because they have enough volume, they're high enough, as well as good enough tender rejection rates. They're not, you know, pale gray. Of course, places like Nebraska, Iowa, Jefferson City, Missouri right here, these are very dark blue areas, which means there is a ton of tender rejections happening, higher rates, but the volume is just not there. Now, if we look at reefers, we can see that Idaho, there is a ton of volume and the tender rejections are there, probably because of the weather. Another interesting thing is that the California, Southern California market, ton of volume and the tender rejections are increasing, although they're not quite at the point where you would expect a wonderful rate. And a surprising thing, South Carolina and the Savannah, Georgia market, the tender rejections are increasing there. What really surprises me week after week is that the Chicago, Illinois market, there is a ton of volume here, but there's pretty much no rejections going on. Now for some great news, diesel prices. I will show this map every single time I do this video. As you can see, the darker the blue, the more expensive the diesel price in that state. But what I really want to show you is the actual price per gallon. And you can see that since the beginning of February, it has been dropping and it's now at an average of $4.60 per gallon. And this is amazing news, but another thing I want to show you, and this really made me really happy. This is the chart for the diesel prices from the beginning of 2022 all the way until now. We are currently at the lowest point we have been since about the beginning of March. So being at the lowest point we have been in a year, is an awesome sign. Okay, now that we looked at the numbers, time for a game plan and let's start with dry vans. Now the dry van market from what I am seeing, it's deteriorating at a very, very rapid rate. However, that doesn't mean that the Midwest is still not the place to be. My goal is to continue to keep my dry vans in the Midwest and book one to two day loads from Midwest to Midwest because the rates there are the most profitable rates right now. For reefers, the reefer market is not as bad as the dry van market, but still it leaves much to be desired. Now, what I have noticed is Pennsylvania is not a bad place to end up in if you book your loads early enough because those loads sell like hotcakes. Number two, the Midwest offers pretty decent rates for reefers as long as you're not stuck there on the weekend. And number three, even though I haven't had any recent personal experience with that, it seems like Idaho is a pretty good market. At this time, I have been keeping my reefers away from Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Utah because of the weather. But again, Idaho seems to be a pretty decent place for reefers. Now, even though I don't have a flatbed anymore, it seems like the Midwest is a great place for flatbeds as well. There is the opportunity to make money there as long as you're prepared to put in the work because those one day loads, especially for a flatbed operator, are pretty tough because you have to strap, you have to tarp. Sometimes I guess you have to tarp in the Midwest. I'm not sure. But yes, it's more work, but there is more opportunity to turn a profit. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something that you can apply to your operations and I'll see you in the next one.